What do plumbers do? Let's go. I'm Kenny Molotov, licensed plumber, professional magician, and entertainer. On this channel, I go through the ins and outs in my career in plumbing. I take you through a day in the life, and we talk tools, theory, and mindset. I'm trying to give you an arsenal of knowledge and an online resource so you can take this trade head on and find yourself successful on the other end. Click subscribe, hit that bell notification, and let's talk pipes. Peeps, Kenny Molotov here at home, and I wanted to answer a really general question that I think a lot of you might be thinking to yourselves as you're getting into the trade. Some of you out there know that you're interested in getting into the skilled trades, but you don't know which direction to go. So I think this will be useful to you so you know generally what sort of thing plumbers do. Now, it's a little bit of a difficult question to answer because plumbing is very vast. You have a lot of different spheres of plumbing, and some plumbers do entirely different things than what other plumbers do. But again, there's a lot of overlap taking place in regards to skill and regards to knowledge. So I'm gonna try to give you an overall overview of what plumbers do so that you understand what exactly you might be getting yourself into. So the first thing you have to understand is plumbers essentially study the physics of pipe and they study the physics of liquid and solids traveling through pipes. That's what we typically do. And not only that, then when there's an added measure of us studying how pipes are installed and how they're installed correctly, not only are we taking the knowledge knowledge, the engineering behind sizes and types of materials and whatnot with pipes, but we also are then getting the hands-on experience of how pipes react to different things. So for example, if you're working on a really old system like a lot of service plumbers are, you have to then deal with like 30-year-old pipes from time to time or 30-year-old fittings or 30-year-old fixtures. So it's a different game according to the different sphere of plumbing that you're in. So just to break down a couple of different aspects of what plumbers do, a union plumber, for example, Example, especially here in Ontario, normally unions are hired solely for new construction. And what essentially happens in new construction is there are blueprints, there are permits that are taken out. Those plumbers will literally build a building from the bottom up. They don't typically deal with old pipes or old materials. They're not typically fixing, they're typically building. And that's one entire aspect of plumbing that you can get into. You can get into high rise, residential, commercial, new construction, which is one entire field. And then what my father and I do is called service plumbing. Now, a couple of things about my father and I though, we do do service plumbing, but we also have experience doing some new construction. In a couple of different vlogs, you'll see that dad and I have built a couple of coffee shops and also some restaurants over time. But the service side of things is when it gets a little bit more difficult because a lot of times you're investigating leaks, you're troubleshooting issues, and you're replacing or repairing old fixtures or old pipes. And now, even though there's a lot of overlap with new construction, the service side of things makes you a little bit more investigative. There's a lot more detective work going on in the service side of things because they'll call service plumbers up to find out where the leak is coming from. So you're going to have to figure out is it an intermittent leak, something that you only see from time to time, or is it a continuous leak? Because those can potentially be signs of two different systems. One might be a potable water system, a pressure pipe that has a pinhole. One might be a drainage system where the leak is only showing when people are taking baths or showers. The next thing a lot of service plumbers do is they come in and they see an old fixture and they're hired to basically swap out an old fixture for a new fixture. We do this with a lot of water closets, bathtubs, urinals, vanities, etc. That's something else service plumbers do. But another thing that you have to know about plumbers is, is not only do we install plumbing systems, but especially here in Ontario, Canada, we're taught how to engineer plumbing systems as well. There are certain parts of the world where you cannot build something unless you get an engineered drawing. That's not the case here in Ontario as plumbers. As plumbers, you can hire me if I'm licensed. Come in, look at a brand new house and say, look, I want this home to have three washrooms. I want an ensuite. I also want a washer dryer downstairs in the basement. And what I'll do is I've been taught how to engineer a system like that. I could figure out the sizes according to the fixture unit. And then I could come back with my own drawing and say, okay, this is approximately what this is going to look like. So there's a really big responsibility when you're doing stuff like that because the entire system system is up to you. And thankfully we do have permits and inspectors coming in to help us out with that sort of thing to make sure that our codes are up to par and our knowledge is up to par because that's somebody's home. They might live there for the next 30 years, you know what I'm saying? Or this house might be around for the next 50 to 80 years. That's something you got to keep in mind that there's a, a ton of responsibility that goes into things like that. And as I was talking about before in backflow prevention, backflow prevention is essentially the phenomenon where water travels in the reverse direction of flow as I said before, but what you have 
have to know is that there's ways for toxins to get into potable water systems because of backflow, which is why backflow is such an important conversation to be had. So when you get your backflow certificate or ticket, it's really important that you keep up to standards with it and make sure that you're doing the due diligence to make sure it's up to code because the last thing you wanna do is find out that you didn't protect the water the way you were supposed to protect it and somehow toxins came in and somehow harmed the residents of that area. Really important things that you have to pay attention to. Now, I think the most interesting part about union plumbing, new construction plumbing that I don't really touch myself because I'm in the service side of things, they not only do plumbing, but they also do a lot of different systems like pressurized air systems. They do a little bit of heating systems as well. And that's something you'll learn in the union as well because you are essentially installing pipes for these different systems. And as a plumber, you already have the skill set to do it. So a lot of times what they'll do is they'll, the same plumbers on the job that are doing the plumbing side of things will also be asked, can you also run a gas line over here for them as well? So there's a lot of overlap with even other trades out there. So plumbing is really multifaceted. You can take your career in so many different directions once you get into it because there's so many different things you can do. I had one teacher that eventually got hired to sit down and literally draw out the blueprints of what buildings would look like. So this company that he worked with was a union company and they did a lot of high rises. And since my teacher was so knowledgeable, he would sit down and try to figure out what materials to be used inside the buildings, how the building was going to be laid out plumbing wise, but also how to make it most cost efficient, which is an entirely different thing. If you think about it, a service plumber is putting in and installing new fixtures. My teacher was sitting down and engineering large buildings. And I mean really high rise buildings. That's something to keep in mind. You can go into so many different directions and that's one thing I want to remind you of. If you get into plumbing and you start it out and you realize that there are some things you enjoy about it, but there are some things that you're like, ah, I really don't know if this is for me. The great thing about it is, is that skill set is transferable to a lot of different aspects of plumbing. So just like my teacher, if you really like theory behind it and you're tired of putting your hands on the tools, you might start looking for work where you can start helping people engineer systems. Or you can go into backflow prevention if that's something that interests you. You can go into water treatment. You can change from high rise residential to maybe commercial. You can go from commercial to rural, which is an entirely different set of tickets and licenses, etc. So there's a lot to be said about getting to the trade of plumbing. So peeps, I hope this helped you out. I hope they let you know what sort of things plumbers do. If you want to see what the hands-on things are for service plumbers, I have a weekly vlog called A Day in the Life of a Plumber. Links up above. Check out those videos. That way you can see See what exactly I get my hands on, what sort of jobs that we typically do in a day. Like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby. I cannot get over you. I keep on wanting you always. Never say never do. Cause I've been meeting you.